this is a hotbed. Now, before you get any funny ideas about my sexual orientation, it's one of those things which is a good way of increasing the length of time in a year when things will grow happily and get going early. In this case, the spring, which quite often is quite chilly, it will actually have very good light levels and things will grow fairly well as long as the temperature is above about 7 degrees C. So what we do is we have this system here which enables things to get started much earlier in the year than you could otherwise start them without any energy implications. This is an open bed which has a lid which comes down and we'll show you that one in a minute. This is last year's compost. What I do is I put effectively a large compost heap into that one there at this time of the year. Now is the end of January. That will start to heat up and in about 10 days time that will be producing enough heat, possibly even less than 10 days time, producing enough heat that I can put seed trays and uh, very young plants in there and they will be protected from frost. The big benefit is that at the end of the year we end up with this lovely compost and this is the area which will be used after this has gone through a riddle to take out any few chunks. This will be used as part of the potting and seeding compost for the spring. So this is the hotbed which we'll be using. The big difference between this section here and the section we've just looked at is that this is fully insulated at the top. And I, all this around here is sealed so it's fairly airtight. So I can just put a few sacks on there if we've got any very cold weather. To open it up I've got a system. simple as that. Now at this time of the year, as I said, we have got to get into here and I will create a large compost heap effectively in this area here. There are bits of things left in here which I put in towards the end of last uh, summer and in the autumn, but that's not what's going to be the main stuff in here. This is partly rotted, which is ideal. What I can do is I'll move some of this up to one end and I'll mix what's left in the bottom here. I'll mix it in with the new stuff, which I'll show you in a minute, putting it in. I'll move this one out of the way because this is what I use just to pull the lid back down again. But whilst I'm working in here, it can just go out of the way. So what I'll do is I'll move this remains of the last year's compost up to there because it's only partly rotted and then the new compost can start coming down into this end and there's a mouse, very good for wildlife as you can see. Mice like living in compost heaps, I don't mind the few of them about. They help to rot things down. So this partly rotted material will have a lot of the beneficial bacteria in it which helps to rot things down. Remember that ordinary compost is a bacterial bonfire. Those are the words used by Lawrence Hills years ago to explain how compost heaps work. It's a bacterial bonfire. As we explained to you last year, last week rather, the difference between woody materials is that woody materials don't rot principally by bacteria. They rot down with fungi, 
various little bugs, other creatures which help to rot things down. Ordinary compost, the soft material, is usually rotted down by bacteria, which is a much quicker process altogether. Now I have got a few of these what's called dumpy bags from the building trade. They're used for all sorts of things, mainly grab sand and gravel etc. But what I use them for is storing up some hay. Now this is hay which I made last year and it's obviously being a vegan I don't use I don't keep animals so this is used to make the base of composts for at this time of the year. There isn't enough green material at this time of the year to make compost so by having this hay and then soaking it thoroughly this will provide the heating in exactly the same way as if it was fresh grass but as you can see here this is very dry so each of these as you can see it starts to weigh it down a little bit and that will get the process working and I shall mix that in now with the few bits of green material that I've got I leave our physalis or physalis, whichever you like to call it, until this time of the year because it's still green in the greenhouse and that will give us the equivalent of lawn mowings. Spread that around a little bit. Mix in a little bit of the half rotted. Does the hay then accelerate the process? The hay will accelerate the process and be part of the main material which will heat, provide heat underneath the, the pots. This is a whole lot of old ordinary soft composts and the remains of last year's runner beans which I cleared the other day. That can go straight in as a main lot there. So we spread that around and mix it all in, in the best way we can. A little bit of this type of material is quite good in there because it will contain quite a bit of air, but it's important that it's spread around, otherwise that area won't rot properly. So this is the remains of the physalis, or physalis, whichever you like to call it. That can go on next and be spread around. That's in there, like that, all spread around and then we'll get some more of the half rotted. Put that, mix that all in nicely. Now as you can see, this is rising up towards the roof of the unit. But that doesn't matter because it will very quickly heat up and it will go down reducing bulk quite considerably over the next week or 10 days. This is the uh, chopped up remains of the sweet corn that we had last year. That goes on next. A sweet corn, although the stems are slightly on the woody side, I separate off the bottom couple of hundred millimeters eight inches or so because that's too woody to be part of this ordinary compost now that I've got that lot on there and some of it is dry we'll get another bucket of water and that can go on there and soak in as you can see we're up above the level of the concrete blocks which form the base of this unit. The concrete blocks are particularly good because they're not jointed together. I don't use mortar unless I really have to. The result is that you've got just enough air movement in the cracks between the blocks but enough to keep 
most unwanted things out. So we've soaked that again and I'll get some more hay. Spread it around. This is hay. This is ordinary hay. Which will accelerate the process. Which will accelerate the process again. The, as, the nitrogen? as long as uh, partly it's fairly high in nitrogen because grasses when they're cut in the middle of June, July are fairly high in nitrogen and when they're dried fairly quickly over two or three days making what is effectively hay it'll retain most of that nitrogen. The other key ingredient to this which is a particularly useful thing which I'll get in a minute is urine. Good old pee. Urine is again very high in nitrogen. That will help the rotting process. I'll put a little bit more of this semi-rotted on top of there. And because we've got a urine separating toilet outside, whenever I have a pee outside, the urine is collected in a bucket. And because it's high in nitrogen, it's ideal to mix it in with compost like this. We covered that in the episode Water and Loo, didn't we? We did indeed. So I'll go and get that bucket in a minute. So you're going to take a pee now, eh? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, now this is me taking the pee. And um, this is underneath our composting toilet, which is in just behind that unit there. The bucket, because the urine is separated from faeces, the bucket down there is what we will use now as our high nitrogen source. The urine is a high the nitrogen, nitrogen feed. feed. Now you can use urine direct as part of a watering program which will feed and water the soil at the same time. But if you're going to do that, you need to dilute the urine about 10 or 15 to 1. But for this purpose here, about 1 to 1 with water will be ideal. So all we need to do with a bucket like this is just to spread it around as best we can over the area that you want to heat up. Spread it around like that. It has a certain pungent smell, doesn't it? It does. It certainly has a pungent smell. And this is an opportunity to rinse it out. So each time I empty it, I rinse out the bucket and get rid of some of the sediment. So that's water? That is mostly water. And now we'll put another can full of water onto here and spread it around again. Now this is the end of the first stage because this here now, this water is taking down a lot of the bacteria which is in this half rotted stuff. That'll take it down in amongst the rest. And we'll leave it like this for two or three days and then it will go down quite a bit until it's about level with here. So it will sink? It will sink down in two or three days. I can then, I've got a whole lot of these planks, those will sit across the top of it and then I can put my seed trays and pots with all sorts of things in, in about a week's time. It will start producing its heat. The only thing you have to be a little bit conscious of is that if you get a very warm day and it's producing a lot of heat throughout the day and night. It can get too warm in here. As I said, the top is insulated. It's got two layers of wood. What kind of temperature, Peter? The temperature inside here can get above 20 degrees C. So... Room temperature? That it, yes, it can get to room temperature quite easily. And you might get hot spots which are a little bit hotter than that. So you can sleep in it? 
Well, your choice, of course. You could sleep in it if you want to. And uh, you've got a lid, so it'd be quite comfortable. It dry. could be very, very comfortable and very nice and dry. So they've got several uses, these hot beds. Oh, they certainly have. Who knows what you might find underneath them? Who knows, indeed? So with these planks in place, they will be all the way across here. I've left these little bit of half rotted in there because when in a few days time I will mix a bit more of these in I got another uh, large bag of hay which will go into the bottom of that section soak it again layer up whatever green stuff I've got at the time and any partly rotted compost which at this time of the year takes a long time to rot coldest time of the year the bacterial activity is very low in an ordinary open compost area inside here however it will get quite warm enough to get the bacterial activity to a relatively high level and the compost itself can get as i say 20 degrees or, or even more under those circumstances you have to make sure that on a hot day particularly if you've got suns coming out you need to raise the lid a little bit I got a couple of blocks like this which I put down in those positions there the lid can come down then and there will be plenty of air will get around this area here but normally that will be closed down unless we get that bright sunshine as well as the heat from underneath the temperature inside there will remain nice and constant the big plus of it is that even at night time this does not then get cold inside when we had that really cold weather the beast from the east a couple of years ago the temperature in here even with only one layer of plastic on the top and I hadn't covered it up deliberately because it was new then and I was experimenting it only just went about minus one when the temperature outside was about minus ten so it shows that this really does work so next week with a bit of luck I'll have a few seed trays ready to go and we'll be able to put them out into here I'll be starting off some uh, peas certainly but they won't be in here because there will be mice in here the peas will have to go into a place where the mice can't get I'm all in favor of wildlife but they can be a bit of a nuisance sometimes so the peas will certainly go in but I will have a, two or three trays of various other things parsnips which like a long growing season some lettuces can probably go in here although my wife sometimes starts them off in the kitchen before I get the, to doing it so there will be various young seeds which we'll put into trays they can then sit on top of these planks and that warmth will bring them on as quickly as anything <laughs>